Hello, Eagle fans. This is Calvin Barnes from the NCC Sports Network. Welcome to a new segment called Where Are They Now? where we interview former student athletes and see how they're doing post-NCCU. Joining me today from the football program is no other than Carl Jones. Carl, he was named to the 2016 All-State Good Works team. He is also a two-time All-MEAC first team selection as the league's top center in 2015 and 2016, helping us win the MEAC championship in 2016. These are only a few of his many accomplishments here at NCCU. Carl, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, man. I appreciate you reaching out and taking the time to do this. Appreciate it, man. So first things first, how's this whole quarantine uh, stuff been for you? Uh, it hasn't been too bad, man. Uh, I'm blessed to you know, still have a job, be able to work from home. Uh, my family's safe. I'm healthy, so I can't complain too much. Hey, man, that's all we can hope for in, in uh, this time. Uh, so, you know, for the people who may not know who you are, tell them a little bit about yourself. Carl Jones, originally from Nashville, Tennessee. I played offensive line at Central from 2012 to 2016. Uh, that's, that's the basics right there, man. Uh, what have you been up to since graduating from NCCU? I graduated in May of 2016. I left in December of 2016. Um, I moved to St. Louis, Missouri, uh, where I started working as a global accountant for an agriculture company at the time uh, named Monsanto, but they've recently been bought out by a company called Bayer. I did that for about two and a half years, uh, just doing the, the general ledger accounting thing. Uh, in this past November, I transitioned to uh, financial services consulting. Uh, so I've been doing that um, in the Washington, D.C. area now uh, for, I guess, about seven months now, um, helping out large banks and help them solve their problems. Uh, so that's, that's been about it. And so how did that transition going uh, to get into D.C.? How did all that, that job uh, come about? Uh, it's actually funny. Um, it was a, a young lady I know that went to North Carolina A&T. She, uh, he was a recruiter for the company I'm at now. We kind of just were friends, stayed in touch, and then ended up working out through an organic relationship. So I got lucky there. Hey, that's good. You know, a and NCC, you know, we got that robbery on the field <laughs> and stuff. But outside of it, you know, it's, it's always all love. It's always all love. Always, always, <laughs> you got you to love that NCC connection. So what would you say is – so what would you say is your favorite moment uh, working at your job right now? I can say my, my, my old job in St. Louis, the, my favorite moment, um, I got to work in uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina for about two months um, doing some transition work when the company got bought out. So that was a cool experience getting to live somewhere else, um, be immersed in their culture and just learn learn a lot about the South America region. So that was, that was cool. What would you say is the difference? He was only there for two months. What would you say is the difference in, you know, being in the United States and Argentina in your time there? Biggest difference I, would, I, I noticed was uh, – Work is important there, but it's not a priority. They kind of have the mindset of work will get done, uh, but you should enjoy what you're doing. Uh, so just for example, when you come into the office in the morning, you greet every single person in the office, you hug everybody, you kiss everybody. Um, they're not as stressed on timelines or, or meeting start times. So it's, it's more relaxed and it's more, the work will get done, just have fun doing it. Um, as opposed to, you know, the US, everybody's punctual, work comes first, work all the culture. So that was the, that was the biggest difference I saw. And then, you know, you talk about the different cultures and stuff. How was it? How was the food, per se, over in Argentina compared to here? It's a, a big meat, um, a, lot of, a lot of beef, a lot of, a lot of chicken, a lot of steak. Um, I'm a basic eater, so when I find something that I like, uh, I eat it every day. So I was eating uh, <laughs> uh, empanadas every day, and then I found this one burger place that I ate every other day. Take us back a little bit. Let's go into uh, back to NCCU. Um, what would you say some of your favorite moments on the field uh, would be? It's easy to say the championships. Um, a, a lot of people would probably say the 2016 championship. Um, I'm going to say the 2014 one. Um, in 16, we were, we knew we were good. We were playing with swagger. We kind of knew we were going to beat ANT. Uh, it was kind of a, a blowout fashion. Uh, but in 2014, man, it was a dog fight. We were young. We were hungry. Uh, and, and the whole day felt special from the moment I woke up in the hotel that morning. It just, it was a different kind of feeling. And I still haven't had that, that feeling yet. Um, so I would say that the 2014 championship uh, was my favorite moment at uh, Central. You know, you talked about the 2014 championship. You know, you kind of touched on the 2016 championship. That season, though, September 17th, 2016, you scored on your only rushing attempt in your career. <laughs> what was the thought process, you know, leading up to that? Did you know that you was going to get that call, like, the week before the game? Or was that kind of like a in-game thing? And coaches like Coach Mack was just like, hey, you know, let's, let's go ahead and try it. It's always every offensive lineman's dream to score a touchdown. Um, so – I had been asking Coach Mack probably for a, a year and some change. Just, can I get a Can I get a pass? Can I get a run? A screen? Something? We were playing um, St. Aug, which is a, a, a D2 team, and he kind of told me, he said, if we get up by a certain amount of points, I think it was like 30 or 40, he's like, I'll give you a carry. And we get in the right position, the right down the distance or whatever. So we got on like a two-yard line, and it was called a heavy package. I'll never forget. He said, heavy, heavy, heavy. So uh, one of the uh, another lineman came in, went to center. I went to fullback, um, and we ran like a – 
like an inside or like a fullback dive type of play. It was like a two yard touchdown, but man, it was it was a time of my life. We celebrated hard, party hard in the end zone. We got a penalty, all that good stuff. So it was it was a highlight of my career for sure. <laughs> when 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 you heard that package, that heavy heavy package, and you knew that you were getting the ball, were you just thinking, I gotta get it to the end zone? Were you just like, just don't fumble the football? Uh, it was a combination of both. Um, it, Running back is a little harder than I thought, you know, getting the right handoff, taking the right steps. I actually rushed the – if you watch the film, I rushed the, the handoff, and Malcolm, luckily, he stuck it in there for me. Um, I was looking for some contact, but I didn't get any, but so I just – I ran straight through. Being that football, for just that one play, how different was it, uh, you know, running behind the line, seeing the holes open up that you – normally that you create for, you know, like a Darrell McLean or a Ramon Simpson? Uh, it's, it's, it's a different experience for sure. Uh, it's, a, it's a new respect for those guys, um, uh, but, but I think – I think it's easier to play running back than it is offensive line. So, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I always got to defend it. He's speaking on the offensive line, you know, you, uh, Bear, just a couple of the other guys, you know, when you were coming up, y'all had a nickname called the Hot Boys. So a lot of people, and myself included, what, when, how did that name come up and the meaning, the significance of that to still carry that to this day? It's really just a swagger you play with. We actually started out, people don't know, started out as the Jack Boys, kind of uh, just the – the moniker of, of when we come in, we, we, we're kicking butt and taking names. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure where the transition to Hot Boys came from, but it was just a, a mentality of swagger. We, we play with a chip on our shoulder. Like, if you line down in front of us, we're going to give you everything you're looking for. Um, and, and that's how we kind of approached every game, every snap, every play. So that's what that is, really. I'm, I'm glad to see the guys are, are still carrying around. Another guy who kind of came a little bit after you, that's part of that Hot Boys uh, mantra, Nick Leverett. I already know you and him, that, that he's talked so highly of you. Uh, even when he was nominated for the All Works team, he talked so highly. So just talk about his development that you've seen him uh, growing at NCCO now that he's an undrafted free agent now for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, I love Nick. Like, that's my little brother, man. I love him to death. I talk to him all the time. Uh, He's he came the funny funny story the the very first conversation I had with him he was moving into his dorms I was helping him move in as a freshman he said what's your name I said uh, Carl Jones he's like oh I'm here to take your spot I was wow <laughs> I was like wow this kid I was I mean I, I didn't say anything bad but I was like okay I see what he's 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 working with but man he came in early uh, I'm pretty he registered his freshman year but man he could have played he just again he one of those people that came in with that dog mentality a chip on his shoulder he played hard played dirty. Um, he was a little slower in the development process as far as learning his plays, things like that. But um, he, he came a long way. Uh, he did a, a phenomenal job at Rice. I went down to see him play, uh, I think, three times. I saw him play Texas. Um, forgot who else I saw him play. But he's, he had an amazing uh, career center as well as Rice. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what he does for the Buccaneers and, and look forward to him uh, having a, a long and, and, and prosperous career in the NFL. Yeah, and, you know, we're looking forward to it and seeing everything. You talk about, you know, him, you know, being on outside and now he's, you know, transitioning. He's a guard now. When did you and Nick kind of click that you really knew that he was that real deal? Was it like on the on camp, like during uh, spring camp or something like that? Was it, you know, during a uh, film session? Like when did it that you saw it? He was like, okay, I, I see why he said he's going to try to take my spot. Uh, um, he, when you registered, I mean, you can obviously, you can be a good practice player and do a lot of things, but. I think the, the switch or when it clicked for me was we were in the games, man, his first couple of games when he was part of the left tackle, um, we would get into some, you know, some some wrecks or some, some, some I guess you call them arguments or little small fist fights or scuffles against other teams. He'd be right there in the mix. You know, we were playing uh, uh, FBS teams, played Duke, we played uh, Western Michigan. And he was right there with the best of them, you know, talking talking trash, getting in the mix. And I was like, this dude might be for real, man. He's certified. Uh, <laughs> but him just him just being next to us, not not backing down, being the only freshman. Um, he was the only freshman on a on a offensive line. It was four seniors, so he came in, he played his role well, and, and complimented us and and sent us out with the MIAC championships. A lot of respect for him for that. Um, so yeah, that was that's kind of uh, when the transition happened. We started. Uh, playing in the games and showing what he's really about. Another offensive lineman I got to talk about you and Bear. Talk about that relationship and that chemistry because you you two guys were something serious together. Man, Bear is my, my best friend in the whole world, man. Um, I, I talk to him literally every single day. Like, it hasn't been a day fast. I haven't talked to him. Um, but we uh, – he um, it's unfortunate he um, – it's unfortunate that he didn't register his freshman year, so he couldn't play with us in 2016. But he was a – he was a true freshman as a starter in the offensive lineman. He was a, a great offensive lineman. The accolades might not show it, um, and I'm hesitant to say this, but – uh, Skill-wise, Bear was a way better offensive lineman than me. Um, <laughs> the thickest feet work I've ever seen. Um, he was put in an unfortunate position where 
his last season he had to play tackle due to, due to some injuries, but he's naturally a guard, so he made that sacrifice uh, for the team. Uh, but, yeah, man, that's that's my guy. Uh, we, we kick it all the time. I go visit him. He comes visit me. Uh, so we, we had some good times and a lot of memories um, at Central. Talk about – do you find yourself repeating some of the stuff that Coach O might have told you when you was at Central? Uh, yes, Coach O, Coach Mack, um, Coach Taylor, Coach Funderburg, uh Bulldog, all the coaches, man. Strength coaches, Coach Lee, Coach Riley, man. I'm a, I'm a big coach guy, so a lot of the coach they, they instilled in us um, and said to us, I find myself repeating to myself or to my teammates, I don't know my teammates, my coworkers um, or my friends now. So definitely, man, uh, the, the, the special thing was they taught us about life through the game of football, um, and, and that's a lot of things I learned from those guys. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and switch from the offensive lineman and talk about another one of your uh, teammates. Talk about Malcolm Bell. You know, we talked to him about a couple weeks ago, and he talked about the relationship you two have. Talk about just the relationship that you have, not just as a quarterback and center, because it goes deeper than that. To be honest, our relationship has grown um, a lot more. We've, we've become closer since we graduated. Um, me and Malcolm, we actually had a, a, a beef our freshman year. We, we did, well, I was going to say a beef. I hated him. I should say that. I didn't like him at all. Uh, but but then we started playing on the field, um, and it was kind of that that brother, that brotherly love. Like I would give him trouble, mess with him a lot, but nobody else could mess with Malcolm. Um, so we always defended him on the field, things like that, because uh, he's our quarterback, of course. Uh, but off the field, man, we have a lot, a lot of deep conversations. We talk about politics, we talk about uh, relationships, we talk about business a lot. Um, he's doing his thing. He's doing an amazing job um, training quarterbacks down in Richmond, Virginia, um, in in the next few years. He'll be be one of the big names, um, and I'm willing to to bet my money on that one. Uh, so just watching him grow and develop and what he's doing down there. And it's a one-man show, um, his business down there. So I'm excited to, to watch him grow. Uh, so proud of him. And, and I'm, I'm honored to be to be one of his best friends. You know, they typically say as a center, especially, and they say with all of his line, but as a center especially, did you ever have to kind of, you know, check somebody that, you know, maybe took a shot at him or something like that? Did you ever have to check somebody on the field like, yo, yo, yo? This, this oh, yeah, man. I love all the time, man, especially the success he was having. When people were, were gunning for his head. Linebacker safeties all the time, man. Just let them know it's not sweet over here. You can't just come in um, and touch Malcolm Bell like that. Uh, that's the, the mentality all the offensive linemen had. So it wasn't just me. It was, it was five more guys right behind me every time. You know, let's shift away from the football field. What were some of your favorite moments off the field when you were time at Central? My favorite memories, I, I would say, man, just the, the, the bus rides, um, spending time with your teammate uh, in the locker room, um, just, just being around each other, man. I'm, I'm, I love all my teammates, all my friends from college, man. Just, I miss them all the time. So I would say that's the part I miss the most is being around, um, all those guys and spending time together, just doing nothing, honestly, was, was the best times we had. Just laughing, joking, telling stories, stuff like that. So now being an alum of NCCU, um, what does that mean to you? Oh man, it's, it's, it's pride, man. It's walking around with your head tall. Um, anytime I can introduce myself. I always try to mention Central, man. It's, it, I try to brag, you know, it's a different type of swagger. Um, and I think that comes from all HBCUs, man. Uh, so being an alum of Central, it means the world to me. If I could do it all over again, um, athletically, I wouldn't go to any other school. Academically, I wouldn't go to any other school. So I'm forever indebted to Central, and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to go there. If you were to able to talk to some of the young student athletes at Central, um, what would be a couple of things that you would tell them? Take advantage of your youth. Um, I think we, we underestimate the power and the pull you have when you're younger. Uh, when you're when you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you can walk up to people and, and ask them questions. You can knock on doors. You can send emails and say, hey, man, I just want to shadow you. I just want to learn what you do. I just want to pick your brain. And, and people will be receptive to that. You know, any decent human being will be like, yeah, I can make some time for you. Uh, so that's one thing I wish I had done more of. When you get older and you become, I guess, a grown man, it's it's a little it's a little awkward or it's, it's harder to get, get in touch with people. So... If, if you're essential and you want to go be a, a doctor or a lawyer or a banker or work in athletics, find people around Durham that, that do those things and, and, hey, walk in their office if you have to. Send an email and say, hey, my name is X, Y, and Z. I'm a student athlete at North Carolina Central University. I'm a young X, Y, and Z. I want to do this. Um, and, and you'd be surprised how many responses you get from people that just want to help and just want to show love and get free games. So that's one thing I would tell them to take advantage of. And uh, the second thing is, is kind of piggybacking off that is, Get something out of your, your time at Central. Um, it, it sounds harsh, but it's Central going to use you for your time, um, your, your, your blood, sweat, and tears, your energy, your effort to play a sport. Make sure you get something out of that. Make sure you get a degree. Make sure you get internships. Make sure you get relationships. Make sure you get contacts. Make sure you get mentors. All those type of things. Uh, so, so make sure you have a, a plan and make sure when you cross that stage in four or five, however long it takes you, 
make sure you have something to show for it. With this whole quarantine stuff, this whole everything, this new normal and everything, I got to ask you, what has been your favorite snack during this quarantine? Uh, probably probably tacos, man. I eat, I eat tacos like, like three times a week now. I don't know <laughs> what's gotten into me, but I just, I eat homemade tacos a lot. And if not, I probably go to Chipotle. Uh, so that's been my, my fix. <laughs> Uh, also, during this quarantine, you know, what is one thing that you would say that you learned about yourself during this whole new normal? I would, I learned my productive hours. I'm, I'm most productive in the morning, uh, so I try to get my most time-consuming or, or thought-provoking or mentally taxing work done in the morning. It's when I'm most productive, when I can focus the most, um, and also that I'm, I thrive best under structure. Um, so, you know, when I'm able to to work out, get dressed, eat, go to work, you know, that type of thing, that's when I perform the best. So with all this just free time, I've got to be more more disciplined and more focused on making sure I get things done. When you look back at your time here at NCCU, um, are there anybody that you would like to thank? Oh, that's a long list of people, man. I'm a firm believer um, that it takes a village. Um, I mean, first and foremost, your teammates, my teammates and my coaches spent the most time with those guys. Um, a lot of memories, a lot of experiences that, Athletic training staff, Sean Thomas, his team, um, the athletic administration support staff, everybody um, in McDougal. Um, the DFO at the time, Mr. Shell Mitchell, she's she's like a mentor, big sister to me. I talk to her all the time to this day. Um, anybody that ever supported um, North Carolina Central University from wearing a T-shirt, coming to a game, buying a ticket, and um, a, a huge, huge, huge thank you to the Holloway family, um, Mr. Kevin Holloway and Loretta Holloway. Um, they're huge supporters of NCCU Athletics. Uh, huge supporters of, of the school in general. Uh, they, they took me under their wing, like my family there. Chris Holloway was like a father figure to me. Um, when I was coming out of school, um, I, I stayed in school and did my internship. I, I didn't do any internships because I uh, I stayed and worked out on campus. So when it was time for me to find a job, man, he took took me under his wing. Um, he he literally like walked me through the process of, of how to get a job um, at his previous company. He was a VP at Monsanto at the time. He came to Central. He took my resume, spruced it up. He walked me through interview, like took time out of his day, took me under his wing and made sure that when I finished the central, I was able to get a job. Um, so, so grateful for him and his family. Uh, so I think, I think that's everybody. I hope I didn't miss anybody. If there's three words that best describe your time at NCC, what would those three words be? Love for sure. Family, it's a big family um, to this day. Uh, love, family. Uh, probably joy, man. When I go back to campus for homecoming or games, it's just a feeling of just joy and happiness. So I say love, family, and joy. All right. And is there anything else that you would like to say? No, man. Just thank you to Central, man. I appreciate everything that, that they've done for me, all the people I've met, uh, relationships I've formed, memories I have, man. Uh, I can never repay them. Um, that's it. To everybody that's watching this, donate to Central, please. Thank you again, Carl, for the interview. Thank you again for the, your time and everything that you've done at Central. And keep doing amazing things because we are still we are always watching and we we love to hear from you. That wraps us up with this new segment where are they now, where we interview former student athletes and see how they're doing post NCCU. My name is Calvin Barnes. I'll catch you next time, y'all. Eagle Pride Amplified. See you the next time.